Hi friends, my name is Denise and I run the Poshmark Closet Eat Play Love. I am just about to ship out some items and I would love to say from my weekend sales, but um, okay. I shipped out stuff before the post office closed on Saturday. I don't know how many items, I think four items or five items from Saturday morning. And then I made one sale yesterday on Sunday. One sale. That was a new with tags mod cloth dress. Oh, let's just break that down for a minute. Things went kind of radio silent in my closet on Sunday. And I am not 100% sure if it's related, but I canceled a sale on Friday. I did closet clear out on Friday and I had a $125 item that I sent an $89 offer to someone on and I turn off offers to likers in my closet. I mean, that's something I advise you to do and that's something I do. So <clears throat> basically I went into my closet and I raised the price back up 45%, just like I told you to do. Well, if it like is one of those items that you've dropped the price on recently, it could actually not migrate into recently dropped price. And so this item that I sold, it was one of the items because I dropped the price on like 600 items. It was one of the items that kind of slipped through the cracks and I didn't um, raise the price back up and then I turned on offers to likers. So I canceled the item because he accepted that offer that Posh Sidekick automatically sent him. Of course, Posh Sidekick is gonna auto send an offer. That's what I have it set there for. And so oh, that was just like such a bummer. And I basically had to say like, mm, cancel. I'm not sending this. So I think that hurt me. It hurt me for the weekend. Like, okay, you're gonna cancel an order. I got put on the Poshmark ding list. That's and then I had a free people show this morning and I sold 14 pieces. So I have 14 pieces to ship out. Someone shopped an item from my closet that I just posted last night that I sold as well. And then in turn, I also sold a few pieces around my show. And this always happens. I, I just have to express that. When I have shows, I sell pieces around my shows. So I also sold this t-shirt not related to my show this morning. I sold this dress not related to my show this morning. And I sold a pair of Birkenstocks when I came out of my show. I had an offer from Liker on these for $50 and I had $44 and reduced price shipping offers from yesterday that I had sent out to people. So that was nice. That was nice. I really made an extra like eight or 10 bucks on these shoes just because someone sent me such a great offer on these. We're going to get into shipping what I sold and I do think it's important to be here when sales are great and to be here when sales tank. They went in the tank. <laughs> Whatever tank you may imagine in your head. One thing I have to note before I get started is, you know, when I pull dresses out of inventory bags and they look like this, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like really wrinkled. I do take the time to turn on my steamer and I steam the item before I send it out. It's like, I'm not gonna be that person. I don't care if it gets wrinkled in shipping. I'm not gonna be that person that sells a dress to someone and then sends it to them like it's been living in a ball in a bottom of a bin for however long. I'm gonna let that heat up. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna quickly <laughs> 
do a little life catch up. And a part of my life catch up is that I have a hat on today because I really need to get my hair cut and colored. And I think I'm gonna go short. So my next video may be a big reveal of a new hairdo and um, definitely some updating in the color department. So choosing to wear a hat today was A, cute, fashionable, and B, a necessity because I am about a month overdue from getting my hair cut right now. <sighs> I did a quick steameroo on this mod cloth dress as well. I have had this for a year. It's a size 12. I know I paid $6.99 for it. It sold for $34. I do have, I feel like, um, I know some people are wildly successful selling dresses. I just feel like I don't sell dresses as quickly as I would like. And so I have set up in my posh side pick for, I send 25% off offers on my dresses the very first offer that a liker receives. I don't send 15%, I send 25%. And that truly is just um, a way to hopefully grab a buyer's attention and try to get them to just buy an item right when they see it. There are buttons down the front of this dress. So as I like to do, I fold in the button side to protect it when it's in shipping. And guys, I have all these really big ideas about my garage space. Like the first idea that I have is that I really want to build like a half wall. And when I say half wall, I don't mean half in height, but I really want to build a little wall over here. Let me give you the tour. I really want to build a little wall over here where my furnace is. Like right there, like boom, little wall that comes out to about here. So then I just have like drywall behind me and check this out guys. I got my, I have been working so hard this weekend. Hello tangent. I've been working so hard this weekend. My photographing station set up where it's a little bit more vertical. So it's easier to photograph items. And I really vowed that I am not going to go sourcing until I get my entire rack. So sometimes Certain pieces can like kind of move down on it, but for the most part, that's just like how it looks and that's where I measure from and everything. These are that entire rack. Sorry. Those are all the items that I need to photograph before I go thrifting again. I have vowed, the vow is real and I, you can take my word for it because the vow is actually so real. I am not gonna front. So this is what I want to do. I want some drywall right there. Behind right here, like behind the camera, is generally house stuff. Camping equipment, ski equipment, tools, fans, air conditioners, heaters, storage bins, ugh, paddle board, bicycles, paint, skis, rakes, shovels. <laughs> it's like so much stuff. And hello, this is a garage, but I'm trying to take over this space and I am here for it. So I was just kind of throwing out there this weekend to Josh, like I really would love to make this my reselling space. I really have gotten frustrated lately because I tend to not want to work out in the garage. It's a garage. I, it's not beautiful. Look at it. It's a garage. It's like, oh, everything's like, 
So I have really wanted to, I bring in my lights, I bring in my cameras, I bring in the photographing board, I bring in my hanging rack. It's like I move all of these things from my garage into my house because I want to hang out in my house and do these tasks because it's prettier and more comfortable and heated and not as loud and not the garage. But realistically, that is not the path of least resistance. My goal is to find that path of least resistance, which is this. You know, right back here is my inventory. Behind that door right there is, guess what? My laundry room. Talk about path of least resistance. I want to be able to bring in the items that I source right into this space, plop them in my computer, hang them on the rack, get them washed, and then when they're on this rack, that means they're ready to go to be photographed. I don't want to have to dig through bags, leave things aside, tuck things under here, have things over here. I just want it all to be ready. And so when I do the task of photographing that entire rack that's back there, and I will get that done, I'm hoping today even I can get that done, then I'm going to start to go outsourcing. And... You know, I'm going to, I don't know what to say, like turn this ship around. I am going to really focus on what's important to me and that is not having miscellaneous items hanging out. It's hard to go to the bins because I tend to pick up weird stuff, AKA, um, you know, egg collecting baskets, egg collecting baskets. This is the stuff I pick up when I go to the bins. I'm dangerous there. I cannot keep my eye on the prize at the bins. The next item I sold was this morning and I had sent the offer out yesterday to the person who liked it. It's an Apollos t-shirt. Apollos is a company that kind of makes, um, I will put a picture up, but they make these coated canvassy bags with leather handles. We've personally had one from LA for my goodness, at least 10 years now. I'm like, they bought a t-shirt, it's going in an envelope and I'm mailing it out. I also think sometimes people just don't want the pump in circumstance. They just want their item. They don't want it wrapped in a plastic bag and tissue paper and you know, <laughs> I, I always am going through the phases of questioning my process in my head. Okay, so back to this space and back to my goals. What I would love. I would love some walls in here. I would love for it to feel a little bit more like a finished space. That may mean we take down half of this workbench because honestly it's about, oh gosh, 20 feet long. The workbench is so long in here and I only have about a third of it and two thirds of it has just tools on it. So we may truly, truly, truly overhaul this space. And I don't know what that would look like, but I want it to feel like a room, right? So I want a live sell in here. I want it to kind of feel like a pretty space to live sell in. And then I want to be able to shoot videos in here. And I don't want to be moving from space to space in my house. I want to bring in items that I source in here. I want to launder them, hang them on the rack, photograph them, inventory them, and be done. I just, I don't want to move things around. I need my lights here. Lights are big and clunky. Tripods are clunky. It's like when you spend your time doing these tasks, you quickly realize what is an efficient use of your time and what is not. And currently I feel like moving all of those items around just so I can more comfortably photograph inside the house is just not a good use of space. Sometimes it's freezing cold in here and that's just the reality. This brand, guys, this is called Petal and Pup. This is the first time I've picked up this brand. Not necessarily a high-end brand, but um, this sold for $30. I think the important thing about this with it selling for $30 is that it sold fast. It sold probably 
within a month of having it posted, maybe closer to like three weeks. I didn't source this very long ago. It has pockets. It's really cute. I love the pattern of it. It's super spring feeling. It does have just like a little thread sticking out. I don't really like that. It grabs your attention. So really not like a, oh my goodness, keep your eye on this amazing brand. But I will add that brands that sell for me in less than a month are brands that I am personally keeping my eye out for. I'm definitely gonna pick up Petal and Pup the next time I see it. Had I ever found it before? No, but it's really, really cute. It has pockets and it sold for 30 bucks and it sold quickly. I almost put it in my show this morning because I felt like it was very free people, boho-y vibes and, um, I didn't have to because it sold before my show started this morning. So that was like happy making. The other thing I am hoping to do, well actually two things, are you ready for it? Is that I want to be able to create my videos from a workspace that is horizontal here. So like a normal person, I would have my tape and stuff and I would just talk to you straight on the camera instead of like, hey guys, how's it going back there? I'm shipping out this stuff. Would you like to join me? Like, it bums me out that I'm not just like <sighs> facing the camera that I have to do this little side step here, this jiggity jog. Something else funny I have to say, these Tyvek envelopes. The post office inadvertently de delivered 800 Tyvek envelopes to me when I ordered 50 of them. I don't really know how long ago, but obviously like I think maybe a year ago. And guess what? I have two, four, six, eight of the envelopes left. I have sent out 792 Tyvek envelopes. 792 orders I have sent out in those envelopes. So I actually had to order more from the post office. I was just like, holy crap. I honestly never thought that day would come. I thought I would just like bring them down to the post office like, hey, you guys delivered me too many, but no. I decided to just put them on, they came in a box, and I decided to just put them on a shelf. And um, I'm glad I did. So now we're gonna be moving on to some items I sold today for my live show. The bundle I'm shipping out is a Pilcro Marled, Marled, so that's marled, okay? And then here's the Pilcro label. This is a more modern anthro label. I did include anthro pieces in my show today because Anthropology and Free People are the same company and they are definitely the similar, they definitely have the same vibes. So I'm gonna quickly run my depiller. I am going to ship these in a box. It's funny, it's like the color of these. Oh, I can't really explain it, but it has like darker little like specks in the fabric itself. A well-prepared person would just have the box ready. I used to do that. I used to have like boxes taped, things ready to go, but now I'm just like, well, I'll just do it when I'm on camera. So here I am, flying by the seat of my pants. This buyer was so sweet. We were just, you know, talking about current items that Anthro sells and um, just really kind of like having a cute conversation. So she was very sweet. I hope she comes back to my live shows soon. She bought two tops, a pair of pants, 
and like t-shirty tops and then also like a sweatshirt she spent i think 65 dollars she spent 68 dollars for the bundle items which I am happy with. This piece I just posted last night and I knew I wanted to have a free people show. So I had definitely been keeping my eyes peeled for free people pieces in general to sell live. And then the last piece she got was this piece, which was, I was saying from my personal closet, just an anthro piece, super cute. It's just a couple of pieces of lint on the back. You know, I'm rolling things, I'm steaming things. I am just going with it. I do want items to arrive to the buyer with them feeling like I certainly care about the pieces that I am putting out in the mail to them. I have purchased from live shows before and it just kind of feels like things get thrown into a box. <laughs> and you know, everyone has their own style, but I want people to know that um, if you buy from me live or if you buy from my closet, if you bundle, if you, you know, pay $10 or you pay $200, you are going to receive the items with care. You didn't know I was gone, but um, let's see. I had a little lunch break, and then when I was on my lunch break, we decided we needed gas, so we had to go to Costco, and then I had to run into Costco to buy collagen and Cadbury mini eggs. Hello, it's a 42 ounce bag. Everyone needs that. So now I'm back. And the other thing I did, which is very impressive because I didn't know I could do this or like I tried to do this but I couldn't do this is open my garage door halfway I always like I would always send it back down whenever I tried to do that so I have the garage door open halfway which means I get some light in I get some fresh air in but I don't get like the looky lose like they can't see what I'm doing in here <laughs> anyway Back to the regularly scheduled program. I think to ship out like four or five more things. <clears throat> or packages, I should say. The next um, items that I sold were these two tank tops. These were just from my personal closet as well. It's funny, a lot of pieces in today's show were from my personal closet. These are just out from under, which is like Urban Outfitters line and you know. So I snuck them in the show because I thought if people like um, free people tank tops they will certainly like the out from under tank tops and then I didn't real really have any pieces that included um, like beyond an extra large so I decided to pull this piece out of my closet because this is torrid and it's a size two, which is a two X. I'm actually gonna untie the strap in the back because I don't want the person to get this and feel like it's too small when they get it. So now it's just gonna be like the biggest size available and then they can actually use the little tie in the back to cinch it to the size they want. So that's my little strategy for this piece. This piece is so cute, this Torrid piece. I like to pick up Torrid. You know, I don't buy it a lot, but I will pick it up if it is like something that catches my attention. Typically, maxi dresses, um, I don't know, new with tags. Torrid. I always like to pick up like kind of um, pull on pants, pants that don't have, you know, a button and a zipper. I kind of lean towards pull on pants. 
I just think people love the ease and comfort of pants that don't have lots of, you know, buttons and zippers. And um, it's a lot less stress when buying something online if it's like a pull on item because obviously the elastic in the waistband is going to provide stretch to it and so you don't have to worry as much about getting a perfect fit compared to like if you're buying cotton jeans. Shirts. I sold this breathless movements moments tank which I have had for quite some time. I've had this for a long time. I honestly would not think this piece would have sold in my closet unless I had a live show. That's how long I've had this piece. This was not a good purchase. And um, let's just talk about free people on a whole. I have picked up free people pieces that were kind of like the shacket style, anything like this onesie. Super current pieces can sell for me like within days of posting them. And then other pieces like this one can sit in my closet. I picked this up when I just started reselling. So two years almost that piece has been in my closet. And, you know, not proud, but that's just like how it goes sometimes when you're just learning at, when you're just starting out and you're just learning about brands and pieces and you see Meadwell, you see free people and you just get so excited. And then, you know, a year down the road, you think, my goodness, not all pieces are created equal. And I just think free people is one of those brands that not all pieces are created equal. How do you become discerning? Here's a little, uh, you know, tip I'm going to say about it, about picking up or trying to figure out what's going to be. I mean, duh. Most obviously, I think eBay, doing a search on eBay with their camera is going to be your first line of defense if you're questioning something. You can see how many pieces are for sale, how many pieces are sold. You can really kind of check the market. See if, you know, there are 2,000 pieces available and 10 have sold. Obviously, you're not going to want to pick that up. But if there are 200 pieces available and 500 have sold, then that's a piece you'll want to pick up. So you have to be smart about it. I think over time, you just begin to understand more and more about the nuances of pieces. Now for me, I knew I was going to have a free people show. And so I was a little less discerning on what I was picking up. And I would just pick up whatever free people pieces if they were the right price point that I came across because, for example, the blue shirt that I just sold that I've had, I know that I have an easier time selling pieces live. And so I just wanted to get my hands on as many pieces as I could versus um, being discerning. Now, if I was just selling directly from my closet, I can firmly state that I would definitely not pick up any pieces like that sleeveless piece. I would not pick up, um, I'm just going to show you because I have some right here in my rack. Like I wouldn't pick up a piece like this, but I would pretty much pick up all thermal pieces. But this like, no, I don't, it's just, it's what it is what it is this piece didn't sell today but i don't i know i won't have any problem selling this this is feels more current to me but you really have to be discerning when it comes to brands and i just encourage you to you know do that little legwork when you're out if you don't feel like you're going to have an audience such as like a live show if it's just an item that's going into your closet you really want to make a good investment. It's called the uh, um, Adela. And Free People makes 
maxi dresses, mini dresses, camis, which is this is a little bit longer, and bras, like cropped in this style. It'll end right here, like kind of where this panel ends. The bra, I, I'm assuming everyone's familiar with this. Now another thing to add, is that it's going to be hard to show you but this tag says free fp1 so a free people one is actually the most current version of the adela line i mean obviously my goal is to not make these perfect but i do want to make them you know, look nice so someone doesn't take them out of their new package and go, oh God, like these pants are a disaster. I want them to feel nicer than a disaster. I think I can get away with shipping both of these pieces <clears throat> in a Tyvek. This bundle sold for $47. Two pieces sold for $47. Um, and I am happy with that. I think I sold the pants for $32. And the um, tank top for $15, which is pretty much what I would have sold it for in my closet anyway. And I like to also reiterate how, you know, I'm not um, selling things for $3 live. I don't sell anything for $3. I may have sold a couple of things you'll see today for $10, but they have a lot of wash wear. They're very, very basic pieces. And I feel like $10 is a steal that I probably could have um, sold them for like five. So, or like thrown them in with a purchase. I'm gonna research counter height portable tables. I don't know if they exist, but can you just imagine me like right here, all my shipping stuff right here, and then just having like a counter height kind of small table where I could just a work surface that I could work from. It would be really cool to have like a little folding table that went down right here and then I just brought it up to ship with, but it feels like a little bit too um, monumental for <laughs> what I'm trying to accomplish. So the next two pieces that I sold are just extra small, small pieces. They both sold for $10. This I just posted last night and this I posted, I think like a week or two ago. These pretty much um, had like a lot of wash wear and were a, li a little bit pitted out even. And I'm gonna tell you what I did. I know typically we would just not buy pieces that were pitted out. So I don't recommend buying pieces that have any kind of discoloration because it's not really a guarantee that you can get those marks out. But these pieces I got from a friend of mine and so um, I bought multiple pieces from her so I didn't really pay a lot for these pieces. I would not have bought them at the thrift store. Um, maybe if they were like $1.99, I would have considered it. But this is the combination that I use to help with any sort of discoloration spots, especially if the items are light in color. So if you take hydrogen peroxide, Dawn dish soap, and baking soda, and make a little paste. Now I do this a little bit more organically. I pour the hydrogen peroxide on the area I need to treat. Then I take the Dawn dish soap with a toothbrush and I scrub it and then I add the baking soda and then I pour a little hydrogen peroxide on it and that paste, I just let it sit for like a half an hour, throw it in the wash and keep my fingers crossed. It helps get out lots of um, discoloration spots. So, I certainly am very happy with it. With it, I do feel like it can get out deodorant marks that may be on an item. I need to kind of state, just kind of put out there, 
that, um, you know, I try to ship as minimally as possible. So with the potential of shipping out items that can be recycled and aren't creating more waste, I, you won't see me wrapping things in plastic or um, using poly mailers. Um, I just, I don't do that. I pretty much use everything from the post office. But these envelopes, and this one closed a little wonky. I'm not quite sure why. These envelopes from the post office are like a cardstock. So people can recycle these. I use these for smaller items like the bras and t-shirts. I think they work really well. I, in the last video, I also showed um, if you want to get fancy, I bought these cardstock mailers. Uh, craft paper mailers maybe they're not really really heavy duty but I love them especially when people buy Patagonia and particular items in my closet I like to kind of show people that I'm not really adding to waste that I'm trying to be as minimal as possible the last clothing item that I'm shipping is, you know, a pair of these Sundance pants. I sold these live today for $30 and I just bought these on Saturday. I posted them on Sunday and I sold them on Monday. Basically, during my live shows, I say... Please, anyone, if there's anything in my closet you would like to see, just say the word and I'll pull it. And someone came into my live show and she said, yeah, can I see the Sundance Bastille Easy Pants? And I was like, of course you can. And what's really funny about her buying these pants is that they were right on top of my bin that um, is like my to inventory bin photographed posted and then it needs to i store things in poly bags and i reuse 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 those poly bags i use painters tape to seal them after that seal doesn't work anymore so they were ready to be put away and they were in my closet for a day it's funny because i honestly thought i they would be a little bit more of a long tail piece Someone just happened to notice them in my closet and decided, well, I'm going to pop into her live show and see if she'll sell them to me. And guess what? Yes. Denise is a let me pull that for you. Let me show them to you and let me sell them to you. So I did. I'm very happy. I love when something doesn't even make it into inventory. Is that not the ultimate like bonus? makes me feel good when that happens when I sell something in a day if I sell something I will say in two or three weeks let's just call it in 21 days if I sell an item in 21 days of being posted I feel like I am sourcing correctly I am picking up items that I know people want and that makes me happy and there were actually once, I didn't run comps on these pants. I just kind of knew that I wanted them. They were $6.99 and I didn't run comps, but when I got home and I was looking for the stock photo, I thought, oh my goodness, there are so many pairs of pants like this for sale available. And I thought, oh, this might not be have this might not have been a good buy, but they were a size 12. And I noticed a lot of the ones that were for sale were actually petite length. And these were a size 12 regular length. So I think that saved me. I probably would not have purchased them if they were petite in stocks. I'm a size 10, so I'm not a little lady, okay? But oh my goodness, these Birkenstocks are a size 36. Holy moly. So this is a women's five, basically. So I had sent them, I had these in my closet for 68. I had them in my closet for, oh, they've definitely reposted. I had them in my closet for, um, oh goodness gracious, probably six months, maybe since early, 
I was gonna say early summer. So yeah, absolutely. Midsummer, six months. And um, I have them in my closet for 68. I had sent out 30% off offers, just like I've kind of talked about lately. You know, say something has 25 likes, you send out your lowest offer, which is 35% off and no one buys them. You know what that means to me? That means I need to repost those. These were not reposted. I happen to have $44 offers out on these sandals. During my live show today, I received a $50 offer on these. They were $68. And yes, I immediately and happily accepted that offer. Um, I was so excited. Sometimes like you'll get a notification that you received an offer. And there really is a part of me that just like wants to duck and cover because I do get a lot of low ball offers. For example, just this afternoon, I got a $17 offer on a $55 shirt. So I countered with $45. <laughs> this is a medium shipping box. So <laughs> look, they're so cute. Um, and I know people say, oh, I don't buy small shoes. Well, people with small feet need shoes too. So I don't know why people say they don't buy small shoes because women who are a size five, they also need shoes. Believe it or not, they do. It's a thing. <laughs> I'm proving it right now. Um, anyway, so I usually duck and cover when you know, offers come in, especially if it's on an item that, you know, is $68. I'm expecting, oh, here comes a $20 offer because that I feel like is the norm. And it wasn't, it was a great offer. And I jumped on that offer immediately. I was saying I like to keep my packaging to a minimum but you have to be careful like you can't just ship out these shoes and hope that they wouldn't get crushed so to avoid and I'm getting crushed I do save all of these things that we get from Amazon it's like the air pockets and I put those in an order like this just to create some of that space to protect the box from getting crushed as far as my tape dispenser, now that we're a little while out on this, um, I have mixed feelings about it. It's definitely like a two hand process, which I knew it was going to be, but it's a little cumbersome. I like it, but I don't absolutely love it. I guess I like it more than the tape gun, but anyway, let's see. So my one Sunday order happened to turn into a nice little run on packages here. I feel a little bit better <laughs> instead of saying, hey, ship with me one item. Appreciated, or I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in learning about live shows, I've created a little playlist on really um, dispelling some of the myths and helping people navigate the interface of creating live shows. I would like to say thank you so much for watching. And um, as always, may kindness light your path. Take care, everyone.